Hello and welcome. My name is Jeff Malone. I'm the CEO of BioMelbourne Network and welcome to the Trade Mission 2022 uh, between Victoria and Singapore. Pacific. We're going to give everyone another 30 seconds to a minute just to settle in as a function of uh, Zoom and uh, then we'll formally commence. So we'll be with you again just a moment. All right, well, once again, hello and welcome to our BioForum. It's an overview of the Victorian Singaporean health tech ecosystem. My name is Jeff Malone. I'm the CEO of BioMelbourne Network, and it's my great pleasure to be here to host the discussion today. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet uh, uh, throughout Australia and their continued connections to land, sea, and culture. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be online today. I'm personally joined you, uh, joining you from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Uh, so thank you. This, this all started a, a few years ago when I was first working in, or I was most recently working in Singapore, and, uh, and, and working with all the, the, the folks that you see uh, online today. Um, who are going to be presenting. And the idea for the trade mission really came together during the lockdown and originally started with this as an entirely virtual trade mission. Um, I brought the idea to Global Victoria, who was really supportive of an understanding of the value that <clears throat> the uh, Victorian service sector provides to this ecosystem here um, in Victoria and to Australia and more broadly. And, and the value that could bring to the Singapore Asia-Pacific region. So it's really evolved over the, the past year from being that sort of virtual trade mission to having a, a combination of some, some of these information sessions uh, and the face-to-face -face element, which was added as we started the, as, as we actually came in to work with Investic, who is uh, hosting us at the Swiss conference. So the, the, how is the trade mission really working now? Um, we're going to have the two virtual sessions, uh, this information session today on the overview of both uh, ecosystems in Victoria and in Singapore. Um, we'll have another session, uh, a little more granular detail, hearing from some startups and others uh, and, and some service providers in Victoria about their actual experience working um, between uh, the two uh, locations. Uh, we'll have, the, of course, the Switch Conference, and we have a range of, of the, I think, the 29 companies who are in the trade mission. I think we have 14, uh, 12 to 14 traveling with me uh, up to Singapore. And then in uh, November, we'll have a bioform, and we'll be working with uh, our trade mission partners uh, to identify the key aspects uh, and information that uh, we're going to present in that bioform in November. Um, so we're also working in the behind the scenes uh, to send out surveys to the participating MedTech companies. And those surveys will be gathering some more detail about the companies, their products, uh, where they stand in their translation journey, and what services they may be interested in. And we're also putting together a contact list of all the trade uh, mission participants here in Victoria so that uh, people are aware of the services that uh, are available uh, from those companies. Um, and both will be uh, uh, made available to, uh, to all the participants uh, so that really the, the idea is you can be starting to make those connections right away, um, either, either connecting yourself or uh, working through BioMelbourne Network or uh, others to, uh, to, to make those connections. Uh, later on, and I'll present this, we'll, we're going to have a new virtual networking platform uh, by the name of Willem. And that's going to be launching publicly late in October, and we'll be uh, providing more information about how that works and getting everyone uh, access to that so that we can really build a long-term bridge between the two ecosystems where you can find each other, et cetera. Uh, so um, we have a great lineup of speakers today who will give us a, a wonderful introduction uh, to both sides uh, uh, and to get our trade mission program started. 
we'll be hearing from a number of leaders who represent the following organizations. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, uh, uh, here in Victoria, we've got Global Victoria, um, and that is uh, uh, Miguel Hamilton who's going to present there. I'm going to be presenting about um, uh, uh, Biomelbourne Network itself. And then we'll have uh, uh, Medtech Actuator, who actually runs a program both here and in Singapore, uh, A Start Central, uh, Enterprise Singapore, of course, Medtech Innovator, Singapore Biodesign, and Jumpstart. <laughs> so, and of course, thank you to all of our members, colleagues, uh, trade mission participants on both sides uh, for dialing into the session, and a special welcome to all those joining, especially from Singapore or anywhere in the region. In terms of housekeeping, uh, attendees have been muted for the duration of the event. However, we do encourage you to submit questions via the uh, chat function, or sorry, the Q&A function. Uh, so if you can do so throughout the event, we'll address those questions uh, again in the Q&A function at the end of the discussion. Um, we may even uh, get to answering some of those with our trade mission participants during the session. Um, now we're a little bit past the housekeeping. Uh, I'd like to begin the session with an overview of, of um, uh, Bio Melbourne Network and how we sort of fit into this picture. So Bio Melbourne Network um, it has uh, next please. So Bio Melbourne Network, we are we've been around for about 20 years, and uh, we represent the entire health tech ecosystem here in Victoria or life sciences. Uh, from the uh, smallest startup to the largest corporation, uh, from individual researchers to um, uh, content research organizations, service providers, and, and consultants, et cetera. So we have a, a, a broad representation of the entire ecosystem in Victoria, not, uh, not only the, the, the members uh, of Biomelber Network. Next, please. So, if you look at the breakdown, about a third of the, of the members of Biomelbourne Network are service providers. We also have a great number of uh, uh, sort of um, excuse me, support services, uh, biotech and pharmaceutical, medtech and digital. Um, next, please. So although we have about 204 member organizations or 215 member organizations, we probably represent about five to 7,000 people across the system here in Victoria. Um, and the health tech industry, how do we define that? That's front end biomedical and bioengineering research, uh, pharmaceutical and biotech development and manufacturing, medical technology development and manufacturing, uh, digital solutions uh, to help to the healthcare industry, vitamins and supplements, topical products, support services, clinical trials, CROs. Um, design, development, regulatory, QMS, and, and, and more. And you'll see a lot of those participants uh, in the trade mission uh, companies themselves. Next, please. So why are we here? I mean, Bio Melbourne Network uh, was, was uh, started again 21 years ago to foster and grow an innovative, globally competitive health tech industry in Victoria. And we were going to do that through um, uh, the, the initiative and the strategy that we've developed over the last few years. And that strategy that I'll take you through briefly today uh, covers these, these areas, uh, data and insight, identifying opportunities, advocacy, health industry, health tech industry development, and sector promotion. Next, please. <clears throat> so data and insights. Data and insights, we really want to be the go-to source for the industry and the Victorian government for uh, insights on sector potential priorities and needs. We write white papers and do data analytics on the sector. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, so we look for those opportunities, identify funding models and, and develop white papers and reporting around that. And we also get data and, and insights directly from various members around where their pain points are and uh, what their needs are uh, to help uh, either their individual organizations grow or that are needed and uh, support that's needed for the sector. Next, please. Out of those data and insights, we start identifying opportunities and getting involved in working groups. And those working groups might be led by Biomelbourne Network or they might be led by the industry themselves or government. Uh, so um, the, the point of those working groups is really to pull the right people together 
around an issue from industry and government and other resources so that we can get a result out of that for the industry um, uh, according to the, the the scope of work that we're trying to attack with that uh, particular uh, working group. Now, out of those working groups, the results might be a, a collaboration uh, between industry. It might be an industry only led uh, output. It also might be uh, that we go towards an advocacy position with government. So next, please. And so with advocacy, um, we really want, we really are the peak body for Victorian health tech industry to build and maintain a supportive uh, uh, regulatory policy and, and investment environment. And so we're advocating for sector priorities. Um, we act as an advisor to the current government and the health tech industry, and we support a range of government initiatives and, in this case, trade missions to help um, help grow and strengthen the industry. Next, please. Health tech industry development. So we deliver, uh, you know, sponsored initiatives and fee-paying initiatives um, to help improve and strengthen uh, and enhance that in the industry, aligned with. So the, the data and insights we get and the, the various working groups. So some of the things that we're doing and we'll, we'll point out today uh, is, is the new virtual networking platform, which I'll give you some more information on in a moment. We're also do, making sure that Bio Melbourne Network, even though it is called Melbourne, we are actually representing the entire state and connecting that state around the country. Um, we, we do a range of training symposia forums and business, uh, business insights uh, events during the year, 25 to 30 per year. Uh, and, and by the way, anyone can join. Those are entirely um, hybrid events now, uh, post-pandemic, so that uh, certainly we do have in-person here in Victoria, but all of those events now are, uh, are also live streamed so that you can join and be participating in Q&A online and uh, get a recording of those events. So I encourage everyone to sign up to our newsletter and uh, and and, and uh, watch out for those events because they're very much focused around supporting translation of research and innovation into a commercialized product. Uh, we focus on collaboration and trying to find opportunities for our member organizations and the ecosystem here in, in, in Victoria to connect up and collaborate with uh, others within the ecosystem uh, around Australia and internationally, and generally give member support. Next, please. <clears throat> our new, this is, uh, this is it, um, the, the screenshot of our new Willem uh, platform. This is the uh, home page for that. And this is going to be up, this is up and, and running now. Uh, we're still programming the, uh, the, the, the platform. Uh, you know, fundamentals behind the scenes. Uh, it's a globally used platform, but we're just personalizing it for our own use. Uh, over the next week, uh, we'll start to put out information where you can click on that, register your 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 interest in uh, participating, and when we actually go live, you'll get a reg automatic registration as part of uh, our um, our launch. Uh, next, please. And so, if you look at it, once you actually log in, what you're going to see is an opportunity to not only talk about what your company does and, and post information or updates about your own organization opportunities, but you can have discussions. There'll be an events calendar in there so that the events that we do uh, or, or that we hold between Singapore and, 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 uh, and Victoria, for example, will be posted in there. You'll actually be able to search the database for the other participants who are on um, uh, who are engaged in that community um, so that you can find and be found. Next, please. And sector promotion. So member business development and support, um, improved profile and awareness of Biomember Network and, uh, and, and what we do uh, around the country, around the state, around the country, and internationally in this case and really providing promotional and advertising opportunities for our members so that they can get better known and they can, uh, uh, and through their growth and through strengthening those service providers and those uh, organizations, that grows and strengthens the entire uh, health tech industry here in Victoria. Next, please. That's it. And so with that, um, we actually have um, our next speaker uh, who is uh, Magella Hamilton. 
And Magella is the trade manager for health and life sciences with uh, Global Historia. She provides international trade facilitation services to health tech, uh, health and life science businesses in Victoria and research institutes that are looking uh, to undertake business overseas. Uh, she's responsible for assisting uh, stakeholders in Victoria to access trade opportunities in key markets of interest. And so with that, Magella, over to you. Thanks, Jeff, for the introduction. Um, hi, everyone. As Jeff said, my name is Magella Hamilton, and I'm the Trade Manager for Health and Life Sciences at Global Victoria. Global Victoria is the trade facilitation arm of the State Government of Victoria, and we support Victorian businesses export their goods and services throughout the world. Our services, particularly in the health and life science sector, including those online today, are instrumental in growing our economy, promoting our sector and creating a thriving collaborative ecosystem. Their services and expertise in this sector assist not only attracting foreign companies into this market, but also the talent that is required to continue to evolve and strengthen our capabilities, ensuring our ongoing global competitiveness. Next slide, Emma. Victoria has built a globally competitive health and medical research ecosystem. It's Australia's life science powerhouse. It is one of only four cities in the world to have two or more universities in the top 40 of life sciences and medicine. With Monash University being ranked number one in the world this year for pharmacy and pharmacology. Victoria also has 22 internationally recognised medical research institutions. This makes Victoria a hub of innovation a hub of innovation and ideas in drug development, regenerative medicine, clinical trials, diagnostics, device development, manufacturing, and much, much more. Next slide, Emma. Victoria's health technology industry is thriving. We have a large and diverse workforce with a sector that is continuing to evolve, including more than 30,000 people directly employed in the industry, more than $20 billion in annual revenue, and exports of 3.5 billion, including more than half of all Australian pharmaceutical exports. Emma? Victoria's ecosystem is diverse and vibrant and is continuing to grow and evolve. We understand the full spectrum of activity needs to be fostered. This means maintaining strong foundational research capabilities, world-class infrastructure, and facilities to ensure a pipeline of exceptionally educated graduates to do the work and make innovation real. We are proud of the research and development that happens in our state, providing a value economic boost and also helping to make new life-saving drugs and treatments available to Victorians, to Australians and to the world. Next slide. This is a snapshot of our ecosystem that underpins the sector. Victoria is home to 37% of med tech and pharma organisations in Australia. We have more life science firms than any other state. One of our greatest attributes is the level of collaboration, the sharing idea of ideas and building of partnerships. We are truly greater than the sum of parts. And hopefully during these webinars and in-person events, this is the attribute above all else that shines through as you get to know and work with our Victorian companies. Next slide. Melbourne has a vibrant ecosystem, attracting large and small companies. This ecosystem is enhanced by the fact that many large commercial companies make their home in Melbourne and this gives our industry scale. An example of this is the announcement of Moderna to establish a mRNA facility in Victoria. This will become the first mRNA vaccine manufacturing facility in the Southern Hemisphere. Next slide. In addition to the strengths in medical research, diagnostics and manufacturing, Victoria is a key local location for clinical trials. As shown in this slide, Victoria has over 35% of the national dedicated phase one facility beds in Australia, making us the national leader. Our leading clinical researchers and our diverse participant pool has given Victoria core strengths in delivering phase one and phase two clinical trials. Together with other states and territories in Australia, we benefit from the efficient and responsive regulatory environment without compromising on our world-class standards of safety, safety and efficacy. We also value, uh, offer value for money, including having an attractive R&D tax incentive of 43.5%. Next slide, Emma. This type of cap capabilities and facilities does not happen overnight. This has occurred from extensive government support. 
there is strong bipartisan support for the sector and innovation in general. For over 20 years, the Victorian government has led a range of policy and program initiatives focused on supporting innovation within this sector. Decades of investment in skills, science, and medical research infrastructure. This continues to be evidenced by the large scale projects intensely supported by the state government. Just one example is the Victorian Heart Hospital now being built in the Monash Heart Hub. Already the site of the largest provider of cardiac care in Victoria, it is soon to be home the state's leading cardiac specialists and researchers, providing diagnostic and treatment at scale for thousands of patients each year. Next slide, Emma, please. This support is ongoing and the Victorian government is committed to continuing to grow and support this sector. In addition to the Heart Hospital, more than $150 billion has been directed into the health system and into research. These investments continue to yield economic benefit and great health outcomes and help make Victoria a location of choice. The Australian MedTech, MedTech Manufacturing Centre is a 20 million Victorian government initiative that will support the growth and competitive success of me medical technology manufacturing in Victoria, growing lo local med tech ma innovation, increasing med tech med manufacturing capabilities and capacity, and driving collaboration and con connectivity. Last slide. Victoria is recognised internationally for its world-class therapeutic development expertise and as an enviable advanced manufacturing capability. The people who make these capabilities real live and play in a great environment with the schools, facilities and services they and their families need. Melbourne is open for business. It is a friendly, smart, cultured city that is consistently rated among the most livable cities in the world. I hope that by joining these webinars and participating in the physical activities in Singapore, our Victorian companies not only show their, show their capabilities and expertise, but also provide greater insight into the culture, innovation, and collaboration that exists within the Victorian life science ecosystem. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for that, uh, Magella. And, and it's um, it, uh, whenever I look at those slides and I and I think about the the ecosystem we've got and the and the the amount of research and the amount of uh, of companies who are located here in Victoria and the amount of uh, organizations like we're about to hear from uh, such as the Medtech Actuator that that are here and. And while we talk about the, the breadth of companies and startups and, and research, that the translation, the activities that actually are required to translate from that research into a commercializable state um, is the service industry that we're, we're here to talk about today. So um, that just sort of underpins all of that and you don't get a vibrant ecosystem like we're talking about and like you presented Magella without having that, um, having that as a foundation. So, Thank you, appreciate that. Um, now I'd like to uh, welcome Matthew Fritz. Matthew is the Commercial and Partnerships Director at the MedTech Actuator. Uh, he works with his team to develop and drive execution strategies to ensure the long-term growth of the MedTech Actuator. Uh, this includes engaging with and supporting startup founders, uh, developing and managing strategic relationships with key partners and stakeholders across public policy, health, and innovation ecosystems, and once again, um, I'll let Matthew talk to you more about it, but he represents uh, Mentic Actuator here and also in Singapore, and they are continuing to expand in the Asia region. He may touch a little bit more on that. And with that, over to you, Matthew. Fantastic. Thanks, uh, Jeff. And um, just again to reiterate, thanks to Jeff and BioMelbourne Network and obviously Global Victoria as well for having us along and providing another option for us to create even deeper connections between the two ecosystems. As Jeff mentioned, uh, MedTech Actuator has a presence both in Victoria and in Singapore, and we're working pretty hard to drive those connections as well and appreciate every opportunity to do that even further. So it's good to be here today. Um, so I've just got a few minutes to provide a really quick overview and introduction uh, uh, to the MedTech Actuator and a little bit around our activities in Singapore as well. So as Jeff mentioned, just as a quick introduction to myself, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at MedTech Actuator. And there's two main components to my role. That's the commercial development of the business itself, uh, but also connecting and building our network and ecosystem of partnerships, which are really critical to our delivery of the, the work and services and programs that we provide to support early innovation as well. 
In terms of the MedTech Actuator, in case you missed with all of my branding and logos, I'm very on brand today, so I'm sure you can't miss who we are. But we're uh, Asia-Pacific's Asia health venture catalyst, and we run a series of programs where we connect uh, startups, early stage startups with um, ecosystem partners and the fundings they need to accelerate their uh, new ventures. Uh, and uh, if you wouldn't mind just clicking to the next slide, please. Thank you. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, we run a series of, of uh, programs and a little bit around, I guess, why we exist, you know, in this commercial journey. And Jeff mentioned it just before around translating of ideas and early stage ideas through you know, a complicated ecosystem of partners to bring something to market. There's often gaps, particularly in that early stage of getting things done. And really, we really exist to uh, plug that gap from early stage to, to getting a, a med tech, health tech, biotech innovation through, through to market. So we've been around for four years um, uh, running programs and we cover everything from the early idea phase to later sort of series A, series B uh, stage startups. Um, we split programs across both Australia and Singapore. So primarily the first three programs you see there in terms of scholarships, our early innovation competition origin and our flagship Australian based accelerator that goes for 12 months uh, are run out of Australia. And then we have two um, Asia Pacific and Singapore focused programs. So an accelerator uh, run out of um, our Singapore office with our, our Singapore team uh, and also the global navigator program. Um, uh, I might flick on to the next slide as well, please. Thank you. So just a, um, again, a very quick introduction to, I guess, what we've been able to achieve in the last four years as well, just to give you a sense of um, where we're at and, and our maturity. So as mentioned, and this is across total business in Australia and Singapore. Um, so through the flagship accelerator programs and the later stage programs, we've supported 66 startups uh, through, that we've had through and included in our portfolio. Those companies have, uh, have a current market capitalization of uh, just over $338 million now, which I think, again, is a true testament to the work that's done through this model, which, again, um, again reinforces the work that's being done here today and what we do, which is really connecting an ecosystem of partners together to support the translation of, um, of innovation. So whilst we're claiming these statistics here, we, we appreciate all of the work that goes in and all of the partners that contribute to them as well. But it is a testament to how, how well that model works of connecting startups and innovation across, across an ecosystem of partners. Um, those companies have created many jobs as patents and other things they've created as well, which is really great. Uh, we pride ourselves also on having gender equality across programs. We think diversity is really important to drive good innovation outcomes across uh, gender and other areas of diversity as well. Uh, many global ecosystem partners, so I mentioned that um, extending uh, quite broadly through Victoria, of course, where we're headquartered in Australia, um, throughout Australia, and also growing to the Asia Pacific. And we've trained and supported many early stage innovations, um, innovators and researchers through training programs as well. And the last sort of thing, if I could just flick over to the last slide, which I'll just mention um, briefly as well, is that in fact, I mentioned the Global Navigator Program. So I think it's it's really great to um, uh, run many programs like what uh, Jeff and Bio Melbourne are doing and like what we're doing to create those connections. And Global Navigator is one of those ones that we're, we're running to connect the ecosystems as well. And I, I guess it's a little bit like um, some of the other way, if you like. So we're looking at bringing some of the startups back into the Australian ecosystem and the Victorian ecosystem as well to connect in with the uh, Asia, um, with the Australian market and the service providers and the opportunities are here as well. So um, really that program focuses on, there's a number of aspects to it, but in particular, um, yes, it's good to have your technology and innovation, but also around the uh, cultural understanding of the differences between doing business in Singapore and doing business in Australia. So we help bridge that gap uh, in terms of understanding the cultural aspects of doing business across the regions as well. So there's some education and some, some workshops we, we run on that. And then it's really practical around that connection in the ecosystem as well. And again, while I love programs like what's being run here, there's actual practical outputs of people being able to be connected together um, you know, those moments of connection, getting to know each other, getting to know each other's business, and then and driving um, those connections 
to, to see successful innovation commercialized as well. So um, that's the core of the program. And yeah, if I could take a little plug on it as well, if anyone's interested, feel free to jump on the web if there's any, any startups that are interested there to, to join or equally any partners that, that are interested to get part of the program, we'd love to hear from you as well. And thanks again to Jeff and the team for giving us the opportunity to talk about MedTech Actuator and what we're up to. Um, love to get more chance to do it again in the future. That, that's all from me. Thank you for that, Matthew. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a great bridge uh, into uh, to our first speaker from, uh, from Singapore, um, which is Mayank Ranani. Mayank is up next. We've worked together, I think, going on five years now. And uh, great to be uh, back and working with him again. He's the Senior Associate Director, Industry Liaison Office and Program Director for the Jumpstart Program, which we're gonna hear about more today uh, at the National University of Singapore. He has over two years of uh, deep expertise in strategy, biotech, startups, entrepreneurship, global partnerships in the US, EU, Asia, Pacific region uh, with a, a range of, of global organizations. Um, Jumpstart is uh, Jumpstart are dedicated to building sustainable health uh, and, and med tech uh, ventures, collaborating with innovators, technologists, clinicians and inventors and, and with industry. Over the past four years, Jumpstart has emerged as one of the leading health tech venture building programs in the region, scaling over 22 new ventures from 34 projects valued at excess of 200 million. Uh, so with that, Maya, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff. Um, glad to be here and thank you for the opportunity to to present about Jumpstart and uh, talk to the ecosystem down under a little bit before your trip down to Singapore later this year. Uh, so before I start, I'll just uh, quickly uh, give you some background on uh, the National University of Singapore and myself before I jump into Jumpstart. So um, like Jeff said, I have uh, close to 20 years of uh, experience uh, in new products, new programs. Uh, I'm a clinician by trade. I jumped to the dark side, uh, to the commercial side back in 2006 with my first uh, new venture and has been have been on this side for a very long time. I've switched uh, hats since then. Um, and, you know, it's, apart from being a founder myself, I've always been a, a keen uh, uh, futurist looking at what is the future of healthcare and also looking at the future of living. So uh, in my role as a, at the National University of Singapore, uh, the Industry Liaison Office, I support innovation and entrepreneurship in the ecosystem, in the Singaporean ecosystem. Uh, for those of you who have not been here uh, during COVID, uh, Singapore has uh, sort of uh, taken a new path on uh, venture uh, venture building and innovation entrepreneurship. It's palpable in the city now. Uh, you walk around, you see uh, startup founders, you see uh, VCs, you hear uh, diverse uh, voices, you hear what's going on. So uh, NUS is proud to be uh, the nucleus of all of those activities coming out of uh, the city. Uh, we have had uh, many successes over the years. Uh, we have had uh, four or five uh, big unicorns coming out, a couple more coming later this year, if I hear uh, uh, correctly. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, some of these are in the healthcare ecosystem. You might have heard about a company called Bioformis, uh, which came out of our ecosystem and has become super big in the US at the moment. There are others, uh, they have turned around and come back to Singapore, like Hummingbird, who have set up base here coming out of our ecosystem. So the NUS is one of the uh, Top 20 universities in the world, um, with a with the new with the nucleus being the medical school and then all faculties around it. Uh, Jumpstart is a joint university medtech program, which uh, uses the uh, the uh, the impetus in medicine and healthcare coming out of NUS, but also builds on uh, similar uh, activities going on around the other big universities, so NU, NTU and SUTD. Uh, and you would you would see uh, you would see more of them uh, those universities when you come down. But essentially, Jumpstart uh, the acronym is the Joint University MedTech Program. Uh, that's a jump in the Jumpstart, and uh, it essentially is a is a program uh, which has been operating for around seven years now. Uh, we first started in 2016 uh, as a program which supported early stage ventures with grant funding. 
since then we have evolved uh, into a venture building program which provides uh, more than just grant funding so our program provides uh, you know uh, innovators coming out of the university hospitals as well as the university faculties who are uh, developing uh, regulated uh, medical devices, diagnostics, or digital health products. So basically, non-therapeutic products with the resources and the and the capabilities necessary to actually build out the company. Uh, we have uh, uh, basically uh, two main parts of the program. Uh, what we call the entrepreneur development, and the second called the quality uh, and manufacturing. Uh, essentially, the second part is product development. Uh, of course, both of these go hand in hand, but uh, we have more emphasis on entrepreneur development in the first uh, first six months to one year of the program, and then uh, provide further resources and developmental support as the as the company goes into development. The idea is that uh, ventures at different stages of the of the journey could come on board, uh, could have an opportunity to come on board, and we take a long term view of building these projects. Uh, we have a we have a, a focus on quality rather than quantity, so we don't build for uh, uh, for a large volume of of the startups, but we try to build for a large quality of the startups. And by quality, we define by the number of projects which convert into new ventures and which get funded uh, downstream uh, by third party capital. So we don't count family money, family money being money coming out of public uh, funds uh, as, as, uh, as, a, uh, as a marker for success, but we, we count uh, uh, third party capital into our companies and and people joining and building those companies over a period of time as being success as success. Um, this is based on global principles that uh, our in-house teams uh, basically support. Uh, we we outsource some of the activities, but uh, in majority we have a solid in-house support which basically guides these few select teams over a period of time. Uh, typical teams would be would be with us for say three to four years. Uh, so some of the teams which have graduated from uh, the earliest cohorts are. 2016 cohorts have now brought their product to market globally, uh, and of course, uh, with the amount of uh, effort and 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 the and the quality of work that has driven uh, these companies are certainly creating waves uh, across the world. Uh, I just want to quickly highlight that uh, the program itself is uh, not a, a classical. Uh, incubator or an accelerator program as some of the people in the industry would use these terms. Uh, we would say we do have incubation facilities across the campuses and across the universities, but incubation as a service is rather commoditized and you could rent a place and COVID has taught people to actually the access to resources, critical strategic resources like labs and clinicians and, and the ability to actually access uh, 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 strategic partners who understand your vision is is more critical than just having resources. But uh, for the sake of having a phone line and and a printer and a desk, uh, we do have uh, a lot of those uh, capabilities available. Uh, we usually look for uh, long term partners, uh, so we look for uh, uh, strategic partners who are uh, sort of in the game for the long run. Uh, and and are able to have put on a, a founder's hat uh, to see how to help these uh, these early businesses coming out. Uh, and some of our founders have experience as uh, second time or third time founders, uh, but most of our founders are first time founders, and they they really are trying to understand how to go around this complex uh, uh, the rigmarole of uh, bringing up product like. Uh, like a medical diagnostic out to the marketplace. So um, funding uh, for the program is usually driven through our partners. So the universities, of course, uh, have their own funding methods, including grants, uh, uh, venture funding, as well as endowment funds that we have. Uh, but we also rely on uh, third party uh, capital. Uh, in this case, from organizations such as Enterprise Singapore, which have been kindly supported us uh, over the past three years. And earlier, um, we also could receive some support from the Ministry of Education. And going forward, uh, we are in negotiations with other organizations to keep receiving funding. So funding is usually secured for our program uh, over five to seven years. So it's usually uh, usually available. 
and and the idea is basically to create a holistic support mechanism and build a community of these uh, these uh, like-minded people over a period of time. So with that, um, I just want to quickly close that uh, Switch is a, is a great opportunity for us to meet in person. And, uh, and I will be there uh, on Switch, at Switch. And so I look forward to having, uh, hosting you guys here in Singapore and, and seeing you when you are here. Thank you, Mayak. I, 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 re I remember you and I sitting um, at NUS uh, having coffee and talking about uh, how we would one day build a bridge between uh, Victoria and, and Singapore and uh, not having any idea how we would eventually do that. But yeah, uh, but, I'm, but, but I'm glad that are. I'm glad the, the, those are the kind of seeds we keep sowing into uh, into the ecosystem. And if there are enough opportunities available, then some of these seeds become shoots, and hopefully they can these can become strong trees, which will support and give shade for a very long time. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that brings us halfway through. We've got uh, we've got to keep rolling on. We've got uh, next is. Uh, 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 Frederick Nyberg, who is the Managing Director Asia Pacific at MedTech Innovator. And MedTech Innovator is uh, a leading global nonprofit medical technology accelerator. And I believe uh, still, uh, Frederick, you can correct me if I'm not wrong, uh, that is still the largest medical um, technology accelerator in, in the world. That is uh, correct. He also serves as board member and advisor to several healthcare, healthcare uh, startup ventures as well. So with that, uh, over to you, Frederick. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff, uh, for that for that introduction, and and thank you to Brian Melbourne for the for the invitation. Pleasure to uh, speak to all of you. So, good morning to those of you based here in Singapore. Good afternoon um, to um, everyone in Australia. Uh, delighted to be here. So, uh, my name is Frederick Nyberg. I'm the managing director for MedTech Innovator in Asia Pacific. Um, I'm based here in Singapore. Um, I've spent thirty plus years in the medical technology industry. 25 of those I've spent in Asia, uh, mostly in Singapore, but also in Japan and Malaysia. Um, and um, uh, I'll, I'll tell a little bit of the Medtech Innovator program uh, in, in, in just a moment, just for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, with, with Singapore and the Asia Pacific ecosystem. I was also the, the former chief executive of APAC Med, the Asia Pacific Medical Technology Association. So I'll put in a plug there for the my former trade association affiliation, uh, which is a great um, uh, vehicle to um, work with if you're looking uh, beyond Singapore and, and the region. Um, next slide, please. So MedTech Innovator is headquartered in Los Angeles, just off the UCLA campus. Um, the organization has been around for about 10 years. Uh, we decided to bring the program to Asia Pacific in 2019. Uh, we are a nonprofit, um, and, and unlike a lot of um, um, government-linked um, incubators and accelerators, we are entirely supported financially by the industry. So what you see some of the logos at the bottom of the screen, these are some examples of corporate partnerships that we have with, uh, with strategics as well as with service providers uh, here in Asia Pacific. Um, we have many more, of course, in, in our US, US program. Um, so for those of you who are service providers in Victoria, and, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see we, we, we do have some of our past and, and current judges and mentors amongst the attendees. So it's great, great to have you here. Uh, we do uh, partner not only with manufacturers and strategics, the likes of J&J &J and Olympus and Siemens Health and Airs, uh, but we do uh, actively encourage service providers to be part of the, the program as well. Uh, so as you can see, we have Oliver Healthcare Packaging, we have Jabil in, in contract manufacturing, and we have Cambridge Consultants. Uh, so if, if that's something that's, that may be of interest, uh, feel free to contact me after this. Um, so we are entirely focused on medical devices, digital health, and IVD. Uh, the APAC program was, was brought here really because of the encouragement of Johnson & Johnson, uh, who's is a founding member of, of uh, or founding um, sponsor of the Medtech Innovator program in the US. Uh, and they felt that the time was right to bring the accelerator to Asia Pacific because of the caliber of startup ventures that we're seeing here and the level of innovation that we're seeing in Asia Pacific. Um, and and I've having lived and worked here for, for, for several decades, I can certainly say going back 20 years or so, looking at the medical technology industry, not just in Singapore, 
but across the region, uh, it was very much focused on either contract manufacturing or producing me too, or possibly me better uh, medical devices. In the last um, decade, decade and a half, that's fundamentally changed. We're seeing some, uh, some, some top-notch, uh, cutting-edge innovations coming out of not just Singapore, uh, but many of the countries in in the region. And of course, that's why uh, why we have we have Met Medtech Actuator here as well, and they're doing a terrific job in the region, as well as the organizations like Jumpstart and and others. Typically, we're a little bit more of a later we have a little bit more of a later stage focus. Uh, so several of our portfolio companies have been through Jumpstart, or they may have gone through Medtech Actuator. Um, we uh, before we move to the next slide, I just wanted to highlight the photo that you see on this particular slide. It was actually taken on Monday this week. Sorry, we'll let's just stay with that one for one second. Thanks, Emma. Um, this photo was taken on Monday this week, which was the grand finals here in Singapore at Suntech. Uh, it was um, done together with APAC Med, the trade association. We gave away 300,000 US dollars in, in different um, various, various awards. So that was sort of the culmination of uh, our annual program and and the first time really that we ran it in person since 2019 it's been been virtual since um, since then um, next slide please um, so as as Jeff mentioned earlier we are indeed the world's largest uh, medical device accelerator um, and by quite a margin as it turns out um, so we have um, uh, at the bottom of the slide it says 421 alumni companies that is the 2021 number. If we look at our, uh, if we add the companies that went through our US and APAC incubators, or sorry, accelerator program this year, uh, we're at about 509, 510 uh, companies that are now uh, effectively Medtech Innovator alumni. Uh, interestingly, uh, in 2021, the entire Medtech sector globally raised 8.8 .8 billion US dollars, and 2.2 of those went to Medtech Innovator alumni. So effectively, one in four investment dollars globally into Medtech uh, went to Medtech Innovator uh, alumni companies. 95% of the companies that, that have been part of the program since 2013 are still active and still in business. There's been a total of 5.8 billion US dollars in follow on equity. Uh, there have been 30 outright acquisitions and exits uh, with, with 135 100, or 140 or so products currently on the market. Uh, next slide, please. So with this, I really just wanted to, I'm not going to go through this, of course, in detail, but I, I, the purpose of this slide is really just to flag the diversity of the types of companies that we, we work with and that go through the Medtech Innovator program. Um, pleased to say two of these are from Melbourne, and uh, many of you will probably be very familiar with these companies. Um, but as you see, uh, we have participating companies from India, from Korea, from mainland China. Some are from the US and some are from, from the UK. We had a company from Estonia last, last year. So as long as Asia Pacific is a strategic, is a strategic priority to, to our cohort companies, um, they, they are more than welcome to apply to the program. So um, uh, next slide essentially just has the, uh, the link to the, uh, to the website. I'll put my, my personal email in the, the chat to, for the attendees if you want to reach out to me directly. Happy to answer questions during the, uh, during the break. Um, and um, I'll, I'll hand over to Jeff. Thanks very much. Thanks, Fred. And uh, I think... Uh, Anthony uh, Chong, only, we only have a few more minutes with Anthony, uh, and I'm going to let him, without further ado, uh, just say hello for a moment uh, and, and just give a, a, a quick hello. And hello, Anthony. Thank you for staying on, and my apologies for the scheduling uh, uh, snafu, but uh, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. I will just do a quick one, really quick. So I'm part of ASTAR. Um, I'm going to put a whole chunk of things into the chat so that you guys can read it. Well, I need to go up soon. So yes, we are. I'm from ASTAR. ASTAR is about 20 different research institutes, 5,000 staff. Strange thing about us, that although we are a research institute, we are under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. So in short, it's not research for research sake, it's research for economic growth sake. Um, I'm running the uh, incubator outfit that Jeff has been to before. And this incubation outfit, um, we don't, we don't very much operate by ourselves. We are very much plugged into the greater network in, in uh, what we call the science belt in Singapore. So four train stops, 
10 minutes by train ride apart, you get access to about 100,000 knowledge workers. Um, even for us, we, we have uh, been looking at startups. More than 200 startups went through our pipeline. They raised about $900 million over the last uh, five years. We compress everything. Singapore is not like Melbourne where the huge amount of space. Small space, 10,000 square feet. We compress heaps of companies inside the co-working space, engineering lab, wet lab, uh, community, and a whole burst of events. So it's about how can we get people together, combust new ideas, and get things done. Um, a shout out to our friends uh, from uh, Jumpstart as well. Switch is the uh, Singapore Week of uh, Innovation and, and Tech. It's happening the last week of October. I know that you guys are coming by. Uh, we are part of what they call the lab crawl on the 28th, Mr. Friday. Um, begin to host you guys here and uh, have a chat some more. Matter of fact, I was just talking to one of my contacts in uh, Victoria government. And uh, I think you guys are planning something there as well, right? To bring, bring on the company. So why don't we talk more? At the last week of switch when you guys are in town. Um, I think it's better that I stop that. talking and let the startups that we have talk to you guys and then let the interaction flow more freely. I think that's where the real magic is. I'm just that's a cool. token bureaucrat that just tried to do things, but I'm not an entrepreneur of any extent. Yes. Absolutely, Anthony. And we, listen, thank you very much. And we're we're looking forward to being up there and also uh, connecting more and providing that uh, connection base between the ecosystem so that uh, uh, you know the companies that we all want to get supported can find the support they need. And uh, I really appreciate your time and looking forward to meeting up with you again. All right. Thank you. See you in a few years. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Good to go. Thank you. Bye bye. So um, with that, uh, uh, I'm going to hand over next to Alex So, So Alex, um, his designation, uh, his, is, uh, his designation is uh, Innovation and Training and Business Development Manager for Singapore Biodesign. Uh, and that uh, originated some years ago, uh, three years ago, I think, Alex, when uh, Singapore Stanford Biodesign Program originated. And then it ran for, what, two years before it uh, became just the biodesign program, uh, the Singapore biodesign program. So um, I'll, uh, he's worked as senior research engineer across multiple disciplines in medical device development, biomechanics, biology, and computational finite element modeling uh, studies. He has since translated to working with Singapore biodesign. Uh, it's uh, Singapore biodesign aims to be Asia's leading health tech talent development and knowledge partner for accelerating health technologies innovation for its commercialization and adoption. And with that, Alex, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, Hi everyone. That's a great introduction. Um, so to reiterate, I'm Alex from Singapore Biodesign. Um, I realized that I have too many slides to cover in five minutes, so I might be in some trouble here. Um, so apologies in advance if I skip some. Um, so next slide, please. Okay, great. So uh, Singapore Biodesign, we are a national level talent development platform that uh, builds a pipeline for talent in a very niche space of health and medtech innovation. Um, simply put, our mandate is to train the next generation of healthcare innovators. Um, and we are really plugged into the ecosystem. We are nationally funded, we are hosted at ASTAR, um, and we have adapted our curriculum from Stanford uh, Biodesign uh, to fit a more local and regional context. Um, yeah, so in fact, Anthony, who just spoke earlier, uh, he and I are essentially work neighbors. He's just in the office beside mine. Um, so in order to fulfill our mandate, we have crafted a whole range of training suited for different proficiencies and, 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 and different competency levels. Uh, and this range from our open access lectures, um, our workshops, fellowships, and also more high touch um, training, which is um, on a project support. So in 2021, um, Singapore Biodesign was conferred the Global Affiliate Status by Stanford, um, which is a pretty prestigious status. Um, and that, speak, that speaks volumes about the amount of um, work that SB has put into, into bringing up the program and, and trying to professionalize what we do. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so our organization is broken into three main pillars, talent or our training arm, uh, innovation, where we help projects uh, to, 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 to go into markets and of course our community and outreach pillar. Uh, next. 
Okay, our track record so far. So you feel you see a few startup logos here on the left and a lot of ASAR logos on the right, uh, ranging from a variety of research institutes within ASAR itself. Uh, so this is how we plug into the ecosystem. Uh, we help a lot of projects pre-spin off and also uh, a few newly formed startups. Uh, next. Uh, next. And one more. Okay, yeah, so I know as innovators, uh, you guys are familiar with uh, the nuances of MedTech innovation. Um, so our program tries to provide a validated framework to the madness of innovation, uh, leveraging on a very need-centric approach, um, broken down into three different phases. So firstly, identifying the clinical need, uh, inventing impactful solutions with good product-to-market fit, and implementing these solutions into the market. Um, next. Okay, so um, I gotta speak a little bit of our flagship fellowship. Um, so this is where we get in new innovators from across the clinical ecosystem, uh, train them in the biodesign methodology for six full months. Uh, and because of our close regional and international ties, uh, we are able to bring our, our fellows to regional emergence in China and, and in US. Um, so after these six months, uh, we are, they are expected to go back to the system and contribute back. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is um, the track record of our fellows. So um, most of our fellows go into various different career tracks, but still very confined within health, health tech and med tech. Um, next slide. I'm going to skip this slide, sorry. Next slide, please. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about how SB can support companies. Uh, next slide. So again, um, leveraging on training, we have crafted a series of workshops that we open up to a regional audience and a local audience. Uh, we work together with Duke NUS Medical School to roll this out. Um, and besides the usual biodesign framework, these workshops uh, covers topics that we feel would be useful to innovators. Uh, for example, in product development, um, I, I know Jeff came in and, and made a cameo there uh, previously. Uh, we also did um, we also did uh, a, a few workshops in uh, how to craft uh, business plans and, and implementation planning. Uh, so very startup centric as well. Uh, next. Okay, we also do a lot of customized engagements for our clients. We do market validation using our, oh, sorry, next slide please. Uh, yeah, so this slide we talk about uh, the various stuff that we do for uh, a, a plethora of our clients. So we do market validation for, uh, for, for companies using our bus network. Uh, we also do a little bit of business transformation workshops. Uh, next slide. And we also do support um, our biodesign alumni in their projects. Uh, so we do this uh, by providing some prototyping support funding. Um, so you see here a few of um, the projects that uh, we have supported uh, are in various fields in the medtech domain. So Hannah Life is in the fertility space. Uh, Onward Health is a digital uh, digital health um, 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 startup as well. Um, next. Oh, we have a very active partnership with Fogarty Innovation. So Fogarty is a non-profit organization that deals in education and also deals in accelerating companies. Uh, so they are based in the Bay Area. And we do this via something that we call the Bold Initiative. Uh, and via this initiative, we bring uh, elements of very, very high touch coaching from the Singapore Biodesign side, coupled with mentoring and coaching from the Fogarty side as well. So this is uh, something that is open to our alumni network. Um, yeah, so this is an example of, uh, of, of some success stories that the, our, our alumni has, has, has gotten. Um, so via our innovation arm, we are able to support various uh, various startups here as well and various projects pre spin off. Next slide. Okay, yeah, so the next few slides actually speaks about our partnerships with uh, key ecosystem players. So in a conscious effort to be closer to our clinical partners, we now have satellite offices in all three major healthcare clusters in Singapore. Uh, so there's a national health university system, there's Sing Health and there's a national health group. So we have a presence in all three clusters. Uh, next slide. Yeah, 
So again, a list of the institutions and companies that we have worked with very closely over the years. Uh, you might see some familiar logos here. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is our, and this is our international partner. So US, uh, we have a presence in China. Uh, we work very closely in MedTech Actuator who, who does have a Singapore office as well. And we also have region, uh, other regional um, uh, uh, partners as well. Uh, next slide. Okay, great. <laughs> That's the end of my deck. Um, so again, uh, I guess to build on, on to what uh, Mayang and Anthony mentioned previously. Um, so we will be at the various trade fairs and networking events, uh, switched being one of the major ones, and uh, we'll be very happy to uh, we'll we'll be very happy to connect further. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. It uh, seems like it's been a thousand years since I was up doing the uh, master class on design thinking, uh, but it's. Uh, <laughs> In, in some ways it has been. So uh, that, that was really a good overview and, and a lot of information. And just to remind everybody who's on the call today, um, if, you're, if you're there furiously trying to take notes about everything that's going by you, remember you're gonna get a copy of this entire uh, uh, video today, uh, this entire event, so that you can go back through, uh, take screenshots, uh, take a look at the detail and the things that are involved in there. And, and then you can, we can we can uh, get you back in touch with folks to, to ask questions if you need to. So uh, once again, thanks, Alan. Um, All right, well, thanks, Jeff. Our final speaker today is Yvonne Go. Yvonne is development partner, healthcare, healthcare and biomedical with Enterprise Singapore. Uh, Yvonne presents represents healthcare and the, and the healthcare and biomedical division of Enterprise Singapore. Um, Enterprise Singapore is the is the government agency championing enterprise development within uh, Singapore and they work with committed companies to build capabilities, innovate and internationalize, supporting the growth of Singapore as a hub for global trading and startups. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to yourself, Rosal. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you Jeff for the introduction. My name is Levon from Enterprise Singapore. Um, if I could get to my slides, please. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'll go through a very quick uh, overview of Singapore and our biomedical ecosystem. But before I finish, uh, I would like to apologize in advance that I wouldn't be able to stay for the Q&A section. Um, I have to run off for another appointment. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make sure to cover as much as I can uh, in my time here. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so about Enterprise Singapore, next slide. Yeah, so this is our mission. We want to, uh, so before that, so Enterprise Singapore is a statutory board under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And our mission is really to grow stronger Singapore enterprises by building capabilities and accessing global opportunities and therefore create good jobs for Singaporeans. Um, we do this through four pillars, such as driving enterprise transformation and growth, strengthening Singapore as a global node for innovation and startups, develop Singapore as a top global trading hub, as well as build trust in Singapore's products and services. Next slide, please. Yeah, so on that, uh, Sing Enterprise Singapore is actually um, the trade agency with the largest foreign footprint here in, in Singapore, where we have 36 overseas centers covering various cities and countries. We also have enterprise centers and uh, Innovation Alliance uh, locations. So Innovation Alliance, I'll get into that in a bit. These are really nodes which help us to facilitate innovation between Singapore as well as the various ecosystems around the world. Next slide, please. Yeah, next. So uh, to give an overview on the biomedical ecosystem, uh, so this is a very quick snapshot of the various zones and districts that uh, Singapore has with the, relating to the biomedical ecosystem. So we have a lot of MNCs with their manufacturing plants based here, but on top of that, we also have many research and development centers located very conveniently near the manufacturing plants and our universities and the hospitals as well. And beyond that, I think we have a very vibrant local startup and uh, small medium enterprise scene for the biomedical sector. We currently have more than 360 companies closing to 400 in this area, generating a lot of value add and capture for the economy and a lot of opportunities for Singaporeans and the world alike. Next slide, please. Uh, so innovation remains core to Singapore's transformation journey. Um, we have seen an increase in R&D investments in biomedical since 
the early years of 2001 till two, uh, two decades later with balloon debt to about five times to 25 billion in investments. Uh, we have a lot of growth in startups as well. So as I've mentioned, about 360 as of 2020 covering the sectors of farm bio, digital health and mech tech. And we also have a rise in venture funding, which symbolizes and signifies the keen interest in our ecosystem. Next slide, please. And Singapore also has strong clinical R&D capabilities to support innovation and test bedding. So we have first-in-class drugs and medical devices from world-leading clinical institutions. Um, we have three public health institutions that are all very keen in innovation and industry collaboration. Um, and as you can see below, uh, all of these public health institutions have worked closely with industry and even spun off their own technologies to cover various uh, sectors in biomedical. Next slide, please. Yeah, and as I've mentioned, public hospitals are investing in innovation and commercialization. So first and foremost, we have stepped up innovation centers within our hospital clusters. They've helped to facilitate industry and hospital collaboration, as well as uh, give spaces for companies to interact with the hospitals and to set up their own facilities as well. There's also a partnership with intermediaries to accelerate commercialization, um, and they have spun off 12 companies in four years. We also recently, uh, in 2020, hosted an open innovation challenge with our hospitals. More than 50 problem statements were released and companies um, came on board to help solve these clinical problems and help to come up with new technology and solutions. Next slide, please. Of course, beyond the hospitals, we're supported by a growing ecosystem of incubators and VCs. And I think you can see here familiar logos like A-Star and MedTech Actuator. So these partners, both locally and overseas, have helped us to grow uh, the vibrancy of our ecosystem and to really provide um, early stage investment as well as to help support companies in commercializing and translating their technology. Next slide, please. And on top of that, we have global networks to help bio startups to access global markets. So for example, we have Trendlines Medical Singapore that helped to um, bring our companies to the likes of Shanghai, Israel, and Germany. We also have ESCO that uh, spans over 24 countries and through their venture arm has helped our biotech companies to venture overseas. Um, we also have other companies uh, such as NSG Biolabs and NestBio. Health X Capital that helps to bring companies into India through the Apollo Hospitals Network. Next slide, please. And of course, there's a growing number of biomedical companies achieving fundraising success. This is definitely not just the efforts of Enterprise Singapore, but also with our partners in the ecosystem. So collectively, we have helped to grow um, homegrown biomedical companies, and they have now uh, seen a lot of traction in terms of investment, fundraising, and exit. Yeah, next slide, please. And so what Enterprise Singapore does is working with partners to support startups and SMEs in their growth journey, for, specifically for the Victorian delegation and for companies here. I think what Singap uh, Enterprise Singapore can do is to facilitate global connections um, with yourself and our companies here. Next slide, please. So one of the ways, and I, I'm sure um, it was covered just now as well, so MedTech Actuator is a close partner of us here in Singapore, and we work closely with the Singapore team to help bring Australian companies here to Singapore, but as well bring Singapore companies over to Australia. So through incubation and guidance on expansion plans, facilitation of partnerships with corporates, venture firms and hospitals, as well as showcasing companies to investors, um, MedTech Actuator has already helped to facilitate the exchange of companies um, between the two countries since 2018, and we look forward to growing that even further. Next slide, please. And finally, <laughs> as we've all mentioned and all the speakers have mentioned, upcoming soon is SWITCH, the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology. And why I put it here is because this is the inaugural um, and annual flagship conference that Enterprise Singapore uh, organizes. It has over 15,000 attendees hosted for the week, um, and over 35,000 strong global community. We also have an in, uh, an flagship uh, startup competition called Slingshot with over 100 startups pitching every year. Um, I'm, I'm informed the deadline for this year is closed, unfortunately, but definitely keep your eyes out for next year. Um, and we also have many, many sessions um, on key, con key opinion leaders, key content on the trends that you should look out for. 
So the first day, 25th October, is a full day on healthcare and biomedical on the life sciences. So if that um, relates to you, I think that would be very interesting as well. Yeah. Thank, yeah, so that's all. Um, and thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Lavon. And I really appreciate uh, what a great, uh, uh, I won't say last presentation, but what a great way to, to, to round things up. Some really good information there on the, the breadth and scale and 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 the uh, scope of of the, the ecosystem up there, and we really look forward to working with Enterprise Singapore uh, through the trade mission and onwards uh, to, to support uh, you know from both sides. So uh, once again, thanks, and I appreciate you. You're going to have to step off, so don't let me not say thank you just one more time. I appreciate your time and effort and energy putting into this, and we look forward to uh, connecting up with you further. Thanks. So I think we've got um, from here, I think we've got about uh, uh, just under 20 minutes uh, for a little Q&A. And I think uh, before we do that, I just want to point out to everyone that uh, there's been a range of contact information and details that Vicki Jones has been putting into the Q&A. Uh, there is the entire set of slides um, that um, Unfortunately, Anthony Chong was unable to be able to fully present his slides, but he did um, uh, uh, provide a little bit of information and also a link uh, into a start central, uh, which uh, again, Vicky has shared. Uh, Frederick Nyberg has put his contact details uh, into, uh, uh, into the link as uh, has uh, Matthew Chris um, and uh, Singapore Biodesign as well. And uh, for all the trade mission partners in, in Victoria, we'll be able to uh, connect you up with uh, the, the, the contact details and a summary um, after the event. Um, so with this, I think uh, given how much time we've got, I just thought I'd, I'd start a um, first with a, a question about and kind of go around the room. What do you personally hope to see come out of the uh, this trade mission and this building of a larger bridge between the two ecosystems? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a slightly different uh, trade mission in that it is uh, not just intended to go over a, a short period of time, but it is really meant to be the, the beginning of building a longer term bridge. And uh, I may, I may put Magella Hamilton on the spot, um, you know, because we haven't heard from you for a while, Magella, you, you kind of started this off, but uh, may put you back on the spot and, 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 and uh, start the question with you. Thanks, Jeff. I knew I was going to be uh, asked. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing would be to get our service companies out to experience the Singapore market. Um, this is one of the first times we've had a trade mission to Singapore. So as a part of a sort of a pilot, as we start sort of growing knowledge about the market and really pushing our services to the market and showing our expertise and also um, <clears throat> promoting the fact that we've got a very big life science hub in Melbourne and there's a lot of expertise um, and capabilities in Melbourne that can help those uh, companies in Singapore and Southeast Asia to advance their um, products and services. So I think it's just a start of the conversation. And so this is why it's really important that we have everybody uh, converse and work with each other and also provide us with feedback um, when we ask for evaluations. Yeah, I think that's really important. I mean, this is a, and especially, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Miguel, but there, there haven't typically been a lot of services um, focused uh, trade missions. No, right? general, no, that's right. And, and also I think this, this is a bit unique as well is because we're sort of bringing in investment, potential scale ups from Singapore, but also services from Melbourne. So normally with the trade mission, it's very focused on a subsector and we do take biotech, companies with service companies mm -hmm. to an, an activity. So this is a little bit um, different and that's why I call it a pilot because it is trade and investment being merged together before an event um, mm -hmm. and then afterwards coming together. And because this is a hybrid sort of activity, we're having a lot more companies involved in the webinar and then less going physically, but then it, it sort of starts that process of continuing on. Yeah, and creating that that bridge through the digital platform is, is, is going to be uh... A, a new opportunity as well. And I think um, just before I came on, I was discussing um, 
uh, the, the activities we've got going on with Investix, who are going to host the um, the booth at Twitch. Um, and because Bio Melbourne Network is, has has come on board to partner with them during the uh, the Twitch conference, they have focused their Twitch conference activities around health tech because we've come on board. So the, the they're they're using they're leveraging this as an opportunity to really draw in health tech companies from Singapore even beyond the ones that we've got signed up to the trade mission. So we're really looking forward to uh, to seeing what what the outcomes of this will be and and really expanding um, the size of the number of, of medtech companies we meet uh, during during this process. So uh, um, with that, I'm going to go to Fred Nyberg. And Fred, um, you and I have been working together for a number of years as well. And I remember when medtech innovator first started in in uh, yeah. in in Singapore and Asia Pacific. And um, I remember that, you know, I think if I'm not correct, the, the, the program in the U.S. typically deals with, with a lot of startups who are, are further along in their journey almost to a scale-up uh, position. And, and, um, and so you find, the, I think you found uh, when you started MedTech Innovator in Asia Pacific that it was uh, the, 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 the a great range of companies, but a lot earlier in the Sort of uh, translation process uh, and kind of what do you see potential as coming out of this or benefits you see coming out of this for yourself? Uh, right. Well, thanks, thanks, Jeff. No, you, you, you're, you're correct. I think if, you, if we compare the participating companies in the Medtech Innovator U.S. cohort and in 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 Asia Pacific in the U.S., yes, they tend to be a little bit further along. Uh, but I think even from from 2019 to where we are today. Uh, we're seeing many more later stage companies apply to the Asia Pacific program, and we typically track this on a on a on a year to year basis. Um, and um, 2021, 36 percent, so more than one third of the Asia Pacific applicants actually had revenue, um, and and many of these companies. Um, I shouldn't say many, but several of these many, well, quite quite a few of these companies were at uh, maybe a Series B or Series C or even later, but based maybe in markets like China or Korea, where they had been very successfully locally um, for a period of time, but they had no idea how to scale globally. So, so they participated in our program to to get to to build on our network, um, to 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 um, navigate regulatory and reimbursement pathways in the US and seek investors outside of their home market. So, so um, we, we, we see a, an interesting mix, both of early stage and late stage companies. Um, we have had a greater number of later, relatively later stage companies join over the years. Um, and, but, but even if, if they may be at a series, post series A, um, companies still need um, certainly need the services that the, the 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 Melbourne service provider ecosystem can provide and and as, as you know Jeff you've been one of our judges on our panels and as I mentioned earlier we have we have uh, se several um, past judges and mentors um, uh, dialing in from from Melbourne on this webinar um, there is there is a, a hunger for help and and uh, assistance whether that's on the regulatory side whether it's in the area of, of clinical development um, there's only so much you can do in Singapore in terms of of running clinical trials so whether the companies are based here or they're based in in Taiwan or in Malaysia or or, or, or India or elsewhere in the region um, Australia is is a market that's that's looked up to in terms of, of providing several of these services, um, regulatory, clinical, um, product design for manufacturability, all, all these sorts of things. Uh, so I think there's 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 a tremendous opportunity here for um, for the service provider cluster in uh, in 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 in, um, in Victoria to, uh, to 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 work and support several of these companies. Right. Really appreciate that. Uh, and um, Matthew, I'm going to turn it over to yourself. And again, you're in a bit of a unique position with uh, where you sit in both ecosystems. And what do, what do you see as, as, uh, as, as benefits? I mean, I know that a lot of the service providers in, in Victoria are, are members of MedTech Actuator and helping to support the company. So how do you see this, uh, this, this uh, supporting MedTech Actuator? 
Sure, Jeff. Thanks for the, the question and the opportunity to contribute again as well. Um, yeah, as I said, I, I see the connection to ecosystem is really critical to, to, to what we do. Each one of the providers that work in this space, whether it be Mantic Innovator or, or the others we spoke to earlier, all spoke about an ecosystem of partnerships that they're bringing together and those connection points. So it, it's a similar model in that we're all sort of doing that and need to provide those opportunities for people to connect. I think forums, as I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, like this to start to open those opportunities for connection is, is, a, is a great starting point. But then beyond that, sort of really, what are the opportunities to work together more closely and really provide opportunities to integrate the um, interface or the interaction between the startups and the service providers as well. Um, there's a very basic sort of transactional element where it's kind of easy to say, I'm a startup and I need this particular service. But often, and I spoke a little bit more about that cultural way, differences of doing business as well. Often you need to create a relationship to do business together as well. And that takes time and takes some effort, takes some energy to work. So I think, um, yeah, ha having those opportunities uh, uh, and to more and more spend time interfacing between the startups, both through online forums and through face-to-face -face and through trade missions and through our programs and those activities, I think nothing's really critical to, to assist in doing that. And in terms of opportunities for us, yeah, to do that more, that, that's certainly an opportunity for us. And more importantly, opportunities for the startups and the, the entrepreneurs that we support through, through the programs we run. Um, I'd also just pick up and, and say that, um, you know, for us also, and it's probably no great surprise, but, you know, we run quite separate programs I mentioned before. So whilst we are connected between Australia and Singapore, there's also a need, as is often the case, to localise and make sure we're understanding the needs of a local ecosystem and local startups. And there are some subtle differences in terms of the progression and the access to different service providers we see between Singapore-based startups and Australian-based startups. Um, so that's why we were up there with the great support of you know, um, ESG that we heard from earlier as well, to, to really make sure that we're customising and not just trying to bring things that we think are exactly the same in Victoria or Australia and just apply them in the context of Singapore. It's really making sure we understand the, the, the local context as well. And then a little bit off topic, but while it's in my brain, I might as well throw it out there, just picking up on something that's... Um, Frederick mentioned as well. I think we're seeing great opportunities as uh, Singapore as a hub. So whilst there's a local ecosystem, absolutely. There's Asia Pacific, we talk about as this homogenous group, there are so many different diverse markets within it. And I think some really untapped opportunities for medtech and health innovation for companies that, as Frederick said, have done really well in um, establishing in their local market, but then are looking to, to move into, yes, the US, but also other Asia Pacific markets where there is significant opportunity to drive innovation and growth for their business as well. So connecting across APAC, I think is really important as well. Great. Um, so I guess the, uh, the, the, given, you know, given where we are, we've had a lot of organizations on today that from, from a first glance, you might think all oh, these were all competitors. And while there is some competition between some of that, there's also a, an awareness, as Levon showed, that there's a very broad ecosystem happening in Singapore, and no one player is going to be able to serve that entire ecosystem. It just doesn't work that way. And different, different accelerators and actuators and things, uh, you know, up in Singapore, there's Catalyst, which is a very, very early program. You've got a Medtech Actuator, you've got Jumpstart, you've got various programs that are happening that really serve the ecosystem various, at various stages of startup. And it really takes that entire uh, uh, group uh, to be able to really bring those companies forward. And then, you know, really, uh, Fred, you, you're looking for those ones that are a little bit more mature and ready to, 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 to grow and really um, become part of your program. So all of these are, are great feeders into MedTech Innovator, and it's a great opportunity for companies to come out of these other accelerators into that space, you know? So um, um, I've got uh, uh, Mayanka, I, 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 his, uh, his jump right back on. I'm gonna give it to him uh, just because I have to, because I, uh, uh, he and I have had so many chats, but Mayank, the question we had and we've been passing around is just, um, just in a few words, what do you see as benefits coming out of connecting these two ecosystems. And I think on October 12th, we'll have more time to talk about that. But in a, in a quick summary, sort of, what are, you, what, are, what are you looking for out of connecting these two ecosystems? I, I feel healthcare is a collaborative team effort. Uh, it's, 
there's no there's no one person who has all the answers and there's no one person who can actually uh, bring about a change uh, so typically uh, as a founder if i put on a found my founder hat i would go to the best possible resources that i can gather to get my job done and if i took put on my uh, university hat uh, I would look for partners wherever it's suitable for my founders to be successful. So I, I really see uh, a merit in connecting as widely as possible and also as deeply as possible because um, not all of us have all the right pieces and all the right capabilities to do to do things all by ourselves. It's, it's always about connecting and collaborating. Uh, if you take the approach of, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's only to be done uh, out of a particular location or a particular way, then we are missing out on uh, what could be possible by bringing things together. And Singapore is a, I, I mean, those of you who have been here know this, uh, Singapore is a very tight ecosystem. So uh, it's, it's pretty apparent to everybody what exactly are the capabilities that uh, you need. And and also the problems within Singapore are sort of in a, in a in, uh, are unique in the sense of the the way the system is created so i don't think uh, there is any uh, sort of uh, downside of having uh, to connect across ecosystems I, we connect uh, we have connected with the uh, the australian ecosystem the victorian ecosystem uh, for the longest time uh, i've been down there a couple of times uh, my teams have been there extensively uh, my teams have worked with MedTech Actuator, we have worked with uh, other service providers, we've worked with uh, the clinicians uh, down under, and they all report fabulous uh, feedback on each of these uh, entities, which have really provided, um, you know, excellent uh, uh, advice and support to them to succeed. So I, I see no reason why we shouldn't keep going down that road and build it even further. And... Uh, I, I believe this has the potential to to sort of create that uh, 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 virtuous cycle of success. You know, it, it success will beget more success. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Mayank, and um, and and, uh, and I think we're we're, uh, we're nearing the end of the of the session here. And so, once again, thank you very much to all of our speakers. Even some who had to, to jump off is just a recognition of the uh, of the busy schedule. That everybody has. Um, thanks for all their valuable insights and contributions and time they've invested in in putting this information together for us. Um, thank you, especially to our our, our sponsor in this whole thing, uh, Global Victoria, and and thank you to Magella, especially for presenting the uh, bio, you know, sort of the, the ecosystem here in Victoria. Um, as you've already heard, we have uh, an exciting new in initiative that is going to be launching very shortly, which is the Willem platform. And there was a good question that came through earlier. Where does the name Willem come from? Willem is actually the Wurundjeri Aboriginal uh, language word for home. And that's what the, that, that's the origin of the word Willem. And the logo that we showed earlier with the three concentric circles is the, it, it, you would see in any Aboriginal painting anywhere across Australia is, um, is the symbol for gathering. So that is the origin of the logo and the name. Uh, we're sharing uh, the willem.com uh, uh, address, website address, and very soon in the next week or two, you'll start to see an opportunity to get on and register. Uh, it won't be going live uh, until about October 25th, but you'll be able to pre-register. And then once we uh, get that launched, then we will set up a community for the trade mission where you can get in and connect and uh, and have conversations like we've had today uh, in, in much more broad terms. Um, what's next in our trade mission program? Uh, well, we'll be surveying our Singaporean startups and then our next online event will be the 12th of October where we discuss a lot more information um, in, in, in detail about uh, uh, the experiences of our service providers and the depth of service providers that we've got and also hearing from uh, 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 some of our uh, trade mission partners in more detail about uh, uh, expectations and what we're looking for out of uh, uh, working with Victorian service providers as well as uh, 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 at least one uh, company who's, who's been extensively working in Victoria for a number of years. Uh, I'd like
like to again thank everyone involved for delivering this event, uh, especially my staff and uh, Emma Donnelly, who's uh, who's uh, has uh, 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 put in a lot of extra time over the last uh, week trying to herd all the cats together to make all this happen. And, and thank you very much. Um, uh, and to all of the, the other staff here at Biomedical Network, a recording of the event will be shared uh, with registered attendees post event, and uh, we welcome you to view this and share this on demand. Uh, that concludes our first trade mission event. So thank you. We hope to see you at others and have a wonderful day. And uh, and uh, wherever you are, uh, uh, thank you again for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you.